Google's new development environment IDX is now in public beta. And in this video, I want to give you an insight and present the most important features and answer the question of whether we will soon all be using only IDX and no more VS Code. Spoiler, I do not think so. But not because IDX isn't cool, it's pretty cool. And it promises a fabulous feature. However, it can't quite fulfill the promise yet, but let's take a closer look at it together. First of all, let's answer the question, what is IDX? Project IDX is a web-based, integrated development environment with the ability to run and debug applications in the cloud. All you need is a browser. And this is what it looks like. And for anyone who uses VS Code, it looks very, very familiar. Why? IDX is based on VS Code or on Code OSS, which is under the MIT license and which Microsoft distributes as VS Code. And that's a smart move in my opinion. Google is not reinventing the wheel, but relying on a trusted product. This makes it very easy for developers to switch. And you can also simply install the extensions that are available for VS Code. So IDX feeds like VS Code in a browser, but this is already available at vscode.dev, so what's the difference? Well, if you want to start a terminal in VS Code in a browser, that won't work, because it's just the application running in your browser. With Google IDX, however, it will. IDX is not just a code editor, but also provides you with a so-called workspace for each project. And this workspace runs on a Linux VM, and that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the whole thing in an example. So I go to idx.google.com and land on an overview page. There I can create new projects and open existing projects or workspaces. I can also import a project directly from GitHub, which worked really well for me. To create a new workspace, IDX offers me a bunch of templates with technologies from the web and mobile sector. And that's a cool feature. For example, there's Next.js, React, Svelte, Express.js, Laravel, Flutter, some AI stuff, and also, of course, just a blank template. But let's try it with Angular. We enter our name and create our project. What happens now? Each IDX workspace comes with a complete Debian-based VM, which is now set up. And depending on the template we are using, the appropriate software is installed. That means, for example, Node.js for Angular. And that's pretty cool, especially when you're working on different projects with different, like, competing technologies. For example, when you need different versions of a runtime environment, it's an advantage if I don't have to run the software I'm developing locally, but can do it in the cloud. This way, you don't always need to switch software on your machine. However, setting a new workspace up can take a few minutes. Sometimes it also takes a few minutes to open an existing workspace. That's a little frustrating. However, the whole thing is still in the beta phase. It's currently free to use, so I don't want to complain too much. In a lot of cases, it worked pretty quickly. And as soon as we're done, I see the IDE with the code created and my Angular application is already running in a preview window. Cool. It's that easy to create a workspace. And such a workspace can also be configured by the developer and Google relies on the cross-platform package manager Nix for this. In your workspace, you will find a corresponding config file in the .idx folder, where we can find Node.js as a package for this project, for example. But you could also install other packages and make additional settings, for example, run commands every time the workspace is opened, and so on. And I think this approach is pretty useful, especially when you're working on your code with colleagues. This way, I can ensure that everyone uses exactly the same runtime environment, the same dependencies, and also the same extensions for IDX. What I can also configure here are previews, and they are quite something. A key feature of IDX is the availability of previews. And this is especially important in the web and mobile sector, as most software also has a UI. And in our example project, we can actually see the running Angular application within our browser window. That works very well. And if we change something in the code, the preview is also updated directly via hot reload. What happens here? The application runs on a preview server that runs on the Workspace VM. This means that I can, for example, simply copy the URL of the preview and send it to someone else to have a look at this, which is a practical feature. And displaying the preview in a separate browser window also works, of course, so that I can set up my whole development setting accordingly. But Google IDX not only offers a web preview, but also mobile previews, and that could become really exciting. IDX also supports Flutter projects. And since I can use Flutter to develop not only for the web, but primarily for Android and iOS, IDX also offers a corresponding preview. This means that I can start an Android simulator, but 
currently not an iPhone simulator. Google does mention an iOS simulator in some places in the documentation and in blog posts and there is also some video material about it, however, I can't test it at the moment. And that's a real shame because that would be a killer feature. Because to develop for iOS, you need a Mac. And not everyone has a Mac. So if Google now manages to simply give developers the possibility to debug an iOS app via the browser, that would be a really fantastic thing. But as I said, it doesn't work at the moment, but I really, really hope that they reactivate this feature soon. Regardless of this, creating this Flutter project, we see a big advantage of IDX. Anyone who has ever developed in Flutter knows that it can take hours to set up the development environment for it. Flutter has many dependencies and requires a lot of specific settings. With IDX, however, I can get started straight away on any computer. That's awesome. Another core feature of IDX is, of course, AI-supported programming. Google is integrating Gemini for this, and so there is a chat function, but also inline code completions. I personally work with GitHub Copilot and it feels quite similar overall. However, I have noticed that the chat is much faster than with GitHub Copilot. On the other hand, I sometimes had problems with the chat not knowing exactly what kind of application I was working with, even though I have configured it accordingly. However, it should be noted that IDX is still experimental or in its better phase. Such errors can happen and can be fixed. Apart from that, I was able to have code explained to me and also generated some code. A good thing. I also want to deploy a web app in the end. And IDX also offers me a few options for hosting. I can use Firebase or Google Run, which is part of Google Cloud. So basically, IDX is closely linked to other Google services, which makes sense. With Firebase, for example, I can also use different channels, such as a live channel and preview channels, where I can test features in advance. The integration between IDX and Firebase worked really well for me in the test. But that's not really a game-changing feature. There are many ways to achieve something like this and deploy your code base to different stages automatically. For example, you can watch an example using GitHub Actions and Versal in this video I created. All in all, I find IDX pretty cool. Sometimes it still jerks and hitches a bit, but it's still in the better phase. The question is what will happen when it is really released. First of all, Google will charge money for the service. And then of course the question arises who can and wants to afford it. The whole thing can of course be an advantage for those who are already using Google Cloud with their applications. And it comes with the usual cloud benefits. I rely on the security and availability of a large company. My workspaces will probably be easily scalable. That means I might not need a powerful developer computer at some point. And admittedly, it's really easy to set up a fully configured environment such as for Flutter. And this can also save time for some other large software projects. As a developer, you don't have to worry about runtime, emulators or other dependencies. Google wants to reduce complexity with IDX and wants to make the development workflow better. I think they can achieve this to some extent. So do I believe that we will soon all be programming only with IDX and no longer with VS Code and other IDEs? No. Google IDX is not really an alternative to an IDE. It's basically VS Code. It's more about working locally or in the cloud. I'm sure not everyone is willing to pay money to Google to develop. For some companies, it's also even not possible to put their code in the Google Cloud for legal or data privacy reasons. Beyond that, the most important question is whether Google will even offer IDX as a service in the long term. There are many, many examples of Google projects that didn't make it. But Google IDX is certainly worth a look. Personally, I would especially love the option of testing on iOS devices in the browser. So what do you think of Google's idea of a web-based IDE? Try it out for yourself and let me know in the comments. I would also really appreciate a like for this video or if you subscribe to my channel because that would help me a lot to make such videos. See you next time.